secure a victory outside of ACC play. Arthur Duquesne and Clemson trying to win this first ever matchup against a team from the Queen City of Charlotte. Underway here at Historic Riggs Field. Queens had a rough loss the other night. Saturday they fell in a conference game against Stetson in which they scored 71 minutes in. First goal of the match, but within the next seven or eight minutes, the Hatters got two goals in the two to one win. And a Tiger team seeing action for the first time since last Friday's 3-2 victory at Louisville. Clemson comes in having won four out of the past five. Yeah, Pete, their last couple of games were absolute barn burners coming from behind. Knock off number three, North Carolina at home, and then going on the road to Louisville and doing the same. Oliver Karius, he is queen soccer through and through. They began their program back right around 1989, 1990. He came to them as a player at the turn of the century. Tells us during his time, or a little bit after the turn of the century, and during his four years as a D2 power, says his team's lost, what, maybe six matches, and he is now in season number 14 guiding Queens. He's chasing a milestone tonight himself. Yeah, he's sitting on 99 wins in his career, so he's looking for... That 100 mark. Early foul against Queens. Duquesne getting it back. And we'll again see Duquesne, native of France, on the throw in. And a battle and knocked away. Alex Meinhardt. So Mike Noonan. 15th season guide in the Clemson program. Two national titles this decade, played for another about 10 years ago. What a job he has done. And win number 400 as a career, he's going after win number 176 at the helm of Clemson. Well, I'm almost as impressive as the accolades there, the number of times he's been finalist in that Atlantic Coast Conference tournament. You referenced the 2015 final appearance. He's just done a tremendous job here at Clemson. Taking the Tigers to 10 of their 36 overall NCAA appearances. Going to get the throw in from Okinlola. And fallen on by the freshman, Rormans. Rormans, his seventh match. He's given up six goals so far as 29 saves. He came to them from Brazil. They have quite the international flair. Of course, in Charlotte, a burgeoning city, and so that's been to their advantage for a lot of reasons. We'll talk more about that as we get into the telecast. Falling right on top of it, off the aggressive contact, is Borlo Jagi, another South American on their squad from Argentina. Brando. Rio de Janeiro, fifth year in their program. He's going to have to just serve this into the area. Joseph Van Dema trying for an eighth win in his 12th match between the posts for the Clemson team. Minard, after the spill is taken, and now the whistle coming in. <laughs> pretty aggressive contact right away as Trimnall hit the deck. Yeah, I think that was pretty obvious from Roberto Alvarez. Easy call there for the referee. He elected to play advantage for Clemson. Just comes right through the back of Trimnall there, and Meinhardt scoops it up, and he's clipped a little bit too. So just as Queens had an early opportunity to set piece. This will give Clemson a chance to put some players in the area. Tigers about to get the free kick. Ransford Jean, true freshman from Ghana, two-time Gatorade National Player of the Year out of the state of New Jersey. Right here. 
Jean with the left foot. Headed, but wide. Nice try by Antonio Illuminato. Yeah, that ball was whipped in with a lot of pace there, Pete, and Illuminato was just looking to flick it onto the back post. Didn't quite get enough of it. It's a dangerous serve. Illuminato thinking back to his previous match here at Historic Riggs Field and the compelling goal that he scored in that victory, crazy victory, 3-2 to two over North Carolina. Battle Minard. And also fighting for the Tigers, Duquesne. Clemson on the move once again. It's a really good ball, and you're going to see Okanola overlap. In front of the net, the header just wide. Ever so close was Trimnall. That's a really good overlapping run and a positive first touch from Remy Okanola. First touch puts him beyond the last defender. Nice little clip ball here. And Trimnall didn't miss by much there. Doing everything he could defend. <laughs> that is very best for Queens. Was Woodard. Scary moment there for Caleb Woodard, it appeared. Leonta Zachariah was also there for the Queens team. There's Zachariah. Queen's a team that tries to be patient. They're a very position-oriented program. They come in, Kevin, averaging just nine shots per game, and you compare that to Clemson, averaging significantly more. And I think one thing you're seeing from Queen's early is here, they're, they're not really going to, if given the opportunity, they're not looking to build out of the back and try to break that Clemson press. They recognize that. Coach talked about not can, giving up the ball in your defensive third. So if given the chance, I think you're going to see Rormans take a goal kick long punt the ball forward. Oliver Karius has accepted the challenge of building what was a very strong Division II program under his tenure and when he was a player there into one that can compete at the D1 level, not just in the Atlantic Sun with the likes of Jacksonville, North Florida, Florida Gulf Coast, but also with major opponents they face. They played Virginia Tech not long ago, fell 4-0 in Blacksburg. They went down to Columbia on September 24th and Fell 3 0 to USC. Inbound to come. Jagey and taken away. Trimnall couldn't catch up with it. Yeah, good individual defending there from Titus Sandy Jr. That's a good job of staying tight to the attacker. Jagey and Brando. They will reset Samuel Idinge getting it back to his teammate now at midfield. Too strong. That's Momentarily not, appeared Feldman had gotten to a position where he could have gone on the attack. Yeah, and that's not a bad idea. Just the pass was a little too heavy. Trimnall. Hyden's defending. Solid job. Jamal Brown coming away with it. Queens going for a fourth victory on the season. This is their third year as a Division I program. They actually found out they were going D1 in June of 22, just months before the season would begin. So. Their head coach, Oliver Karius, had to go ahead and scramble, get a schedule together, and 
Felt like he had some D1 talent. He had a very experienced team, actually, that first year, so they were respectable in 2022 with all the circumstances. And then last year, several true freshmen had stepped up. A lot of those guys on the field tonight as sophomores. He lost eight of his nine seniors. Only one was able to stay as a grad. That's Brown. Out front, Zachariah. Canovas ahead to Brown. That's well done from Arthur Duquesne. And this is what he does well, Pete. Gets forward. Duquesne able to keep it in. Tigers again on the attack. Crossing pass. Nicely headed away. Again in the box. A header. And again, that's Tyler Trimnell getting on the end of it. We told you about the recent matches, including that thriller Friday at Louisville. A Tiger team, which against North Carolina, showed a propensity to score quickly. And same thing Friday night in the 3-2 to two victory. Yeah, just a flurry of goals there in a span of seven minutes. Able to turn that game around from being down 2-0 to walk away with three valuable points in ACC play. Habu Musa and the Tigers, back-to-back 3-2 -back wins. You look at that scoring sheet in the Clemson-Louisville match, very similar to what this Queens team experienced against Stetson, as we told you. That was scoreless until the 71-minute mark, and by the time they got through 79 minutes, Stetson had built a 2-1 to -one lead after Queens had taken the advantage early with a goal, or earlier with a goal. Yeah, goals have a, a way of changing the complexion of games, and Perfect example of that. Duquesne. Minard centers. Tigers on the attack shot high. Good look at it. But the Tigers, Yoshizawa, who we featured in our open, unable to convert. That's a clever little combination play to put Yoshizawa in. And you can see that run as the 10. He's getting forward. He's just played off by Trimnell. Very good save by Rormans here. Four goals tied for the team lead for Misei Yoshizawa, originally from Tokyo, transferred to Clemson from Virginia Tech. Corner opportunity upcoming for a Clemson team for a 77th time this season as we're reaching the latter stages of the regular campaign. Just two ACC regular season games ahead. A sandy kick headed away. Feldman for Queens. There's the pressing we talked about from Tyler Trimble, just able to close that space quickly. Trimble showing some strength. Try to get it across, but not able to contact. Yoshizawa, footwork, Minard, and there's Wormans. Uh, Yoshizawa, <laughs> incredibly quick to get on the end of that and save that from going over the end line. Freshman goalkeeper from Brazil. That's one of the many things, as coach says, he's brought. Not only the ability to deflect and to get the saves, but also help them in terms of setting it up. Look at the speed here for Brown. Tries to center a pass. Opportunity in front. Deflected away beautifully. And Andema that time. Uh, Queens catches. Clemson, a little counterattacking moment here on a misplay. And Boy, look Magnuson, at Magnuson, beautiful play. Yeah, terrific instinct from your center back if the goalkeeper ever comes off his line. Lucas Magnuson, the freshman for the Tigers from Iceland. A good instinct there to, to retreat and make a beeline for your goal line, cover for your goalkeeper. Canovas took it away. Now Brown is tripped up by Minard. Uh, Clemson aggressive in the counter press here, and Meinhard just a little too aggressive. And 
commits the foul there. Jamal Brown, he grew up near Charlotte, one of the few players in their team from their metro area in Waxhaw, North Carolina. He just saw it go out. Duquesne and the Tigers trying to go back to work, trying to be on the attack. A Clemson squad that lost so much talent, so much MLS level talent, but trying to plug guys into the style that Mike Noonan wants to play. Always on the attack, and as he says, a fun style for folks to come out and watch or tune in and watch. Well, you're certainly entertained, and it's a team that has an attacking mindset. They're never out of the fight. They like to get forward in numbers. They don't let their foot off the gas. Zachariah knocking it away for the Queens team. Jakey. What good movement. That's good pressing from Clemson. Queens is able to break it. Strong kick ahead. Jakey trying to run it down. And back over to the Tigers. Strong defensively from Magnuson just to shepherd that ball out. Tigers well represented across the map, as is Queens. Freshman from Iceland, Magnussen getting ahead to Duquesne from France. Smart move by Zachariah. He's a freshman from Cyprus in the Mediterranean. And those are the balls that Queens needs to hang on if they've won the first and second ball. They've got to have a little sustained possession. Coach Carey has talked about that's one of the things they like to do is dictate the tempo of the game, but he realized tonight it could be a little bit of a different story. They wouldn't be on the front foot as much as they like. Meinhard strong and deflected beautifully on the save by Matthias Roman. Now, Romans will have to set up now and try to defend a corner kick, but what a nice job. You can see how he won the job. Well, Pete, and I see good decision here. He's not trying to catch this. He's just trying to parry that and put that away. That ball has some movement. It's hit with pace. He's able to put that out for a corner. It's a good save. It's his seventh match, the six goals, but four of them came against an ACC team. And that match at Virginia Tech in Blacksburg. Corner kick coming for the Tigers. Yoshizawa, and defended well by Queens. At the end of the day, I think that was Zachariah that was able to steal that ball away from Yoshizawa. Jean working his way through traffic. What an addition to this program, and you just see the star power in him. Magnuson, Minard couldn't control. Jiggy. Hitting the deck was Okanlola. Uh, Kate Benner just went through Okanlola's back a little bit. I thought the referee was going to allow advantage to play on there as Titus Sandy Jr. was able to win the ball. Minard giving it back to Magnuson. Yeah, Quince has just dropped in and staying very compact, Pete. Making it difficult for Clemson to find a way through centrally. Well, Oliver Carey is telling us that basically they can give Clemson nothing to have any chance in the match this evening. Well, that was one of his keys to the game was staying organized defensively and having his team committed to doing the work collectively. And nearly 20 minutes into our match, and Queens holding its own so far because the Tigers have had opportunities. Out in front and from the corners. Canovas. That's a good job by Clemson there, baiting Queens into playing long. 
Meinhard with Duquesne to his left. And cutting in front, shot attempt by Jean. Now that's a perfect picture of what Arthur Duquesne does for this Clemson team. You could see he got forward on the overlapping run. That time he wasn't played. It was able to, to stretch the team, and you can see the passing seam open up as Meinhardt goes centrally. Queens player has to commit to a wide area. Creates a little passing seam for Jean to get in. It's been an aggressive freshman season for Jean, the team leader in shot attempts, ever so close to scoring what would be a second career goal on that last try. Wormans. Three saves already for the Queens goalkeeper. He had five in their match the other night against Stetson. Jakey was trying to get it over to Brown. Knocked away by Canovas. Now well Jakey from Feldham. gets it back from Brando. Tigers now on the move once more. Oak and Lola. And Musa. And you can see Duquesne bombing forward again. Meinhard getting it to Duquesne. His pass deflected away by Rormans. Meinhard ricocheted out of there. Yeah, Queen's appealing for a handball there from Alex Meinhard. Almost did. It looked like for a second he was on the verge of doing just that. Sandy. Duquesne defended by Brown. The ever quick John was trying to move off the pass. Delivered back to him. My Meinhard. And now Jean for Duquesne with the left foot. Front of the net, again deflected away. I think that was I didn't get on the end of that. Able to win that ball, but Duquesne continuing to get forward at will on this left side for Clemson. Duquesne, hard charging, was a freshman, Rodrigo Canovas from Brazil. John, you can tell they're aware of him in the scouting report so fast. And step for step, really nice defensive effort by Zachariah. Well, he draws a lot of attention on the dribble, doesn't he, Pete? Oak and Lola, Tigers will assess from right of the goal. Musa. Duquesne with Minard. Illuminato. Oak and Lola. And not able to get an angle on it. Wahabu Musa. On this night when Mike Noon and the Clemson head coach could reach 400 career victories. Well, at Clemson, 175 wins in his tenure here. The late great Dr. I.M. Ibrahim, of course, set the standard for Clemson soccer. Two national titles in the 1980s, part of his 388 wins. Just staggering looking at those <laughs> numbers, Pete. Mike Noonan prior stops at Brown in New Hampshire, where he amassed a significant amount of his 399 wins entering tonight. Uh, he's no stranger to the to the big games. I thought it was interesting. He said that he, when he took the job, told Mrs. Ibrahim, the widow of I.M. Ibrahim, that one of the reasons he took the job is he wanted to restore Clemson to that national level that her late husband had the mat with those victories in the College Cup Championship match in 84 and 87. Well, you know, talking to Mike 
about the desire to come to Clemson. He was doing a terrific job at Brown. Teams making deep NCAA tournament runs, winning conference championships on a regular basis, but he also felt that if you were to sustain that and really be in contention for national championship, you had to come to a program that has the resources in the history. And uh, he has certainly added to the history at Clemson. And fitting at the level that he has Clemson now that a, another power program would oh, he's be on. playing its first ACC game here. Trimnall against a freshman goalkeeper, but the whistle before he could load up. How about the fact that Stanford actually opened its ACC schedule for the first time back here where Clemson beat him in the Elite Eight a year ago. And a team that, of course, Clemson had faced in postseason, beat him for the College Cup crown in 2015. And Clemson and Stanford being mentioned in the same sentence tells you everything you need to know about the level the Tigers are at. It was very, very close here, Pete. I, I'm not sure if he was, but the flag went up quickly from the assistant referee. Brown feeding ahead. Feldman and the goal. Michel Feldman, his third goal of the season. I think they're actually going to take a look at this and just confirm that he was in a onside position. It was very close. Looked like there was also some tussling with the center back as well, a little shirt pull, but I'm not sure if he was in an onside position. <laughs> His last two calls have been very, very close. I'd rather be up here in the booth than down there with the flag on the touchline. Well, you see the uh, <laughs> little bit of a grab. You really couldn't see it from that angle. We're at an opposite angle from that. Yeah, I do we will get a call that. as to whether or not he was offside or if the goal will stand. Well, I do believe that uh, I think it was Rumi Okanlola, the right back for Clemson, kept the player in an onside position. So the goal will stand, and Oliver Karius trying to get a 100th win in his head coaching career. Well, well he sees fair. his team break out on top against the reigning national champs who could well be vying for another college cup in just a couple of months. I think it's uh, fair to say that that was a, against the run of play here so far tonight. Quick dump inside, and the sliding goal! Quick answer, Wahabu Musa. Well, the finish was terrific, but the, the clever scooped ball to play over the top and release Musa was outstanding. Second goal for the Tiger freshman came from Montverde Academy by way of the Ghana Republic. So within seconds of each other, first the goal by Michelle Feldman on the breakaway. And you can see he's kept on side here, just played through, and he's able to, to beat Titus Sandy Jr. to the ball and put cleans ahead. But have a look here at this little clever scooped ball from Illuminato to release the diagonal run from Musa in the finish to make it 1 1. Jean then hitting the deck. <laughs> well, you have to love the unpredictable nature of football. Zachariah, I believe it was Zachariah, might have instead for Queensman Jamal Brown on the infraction. And that is a yellow card on Brown who made contact with the Tigers' Ranford Jean. And there you see it. It's just late as Jean is getting by him. It's an easy call for the referee. Jean, another free kick from left of the goal for the left footer. Great try on the header attempt in front by Illuminato, but unsuccessful. Well, this is where you've got to be careful. You, Clemson is 
Very good at striking again after they score. Take another look at the beautiful feed by Illuminato and then in timing beautifully by Musa. Well, it was the, the run triggered the pass there. Musa in a wide area started to make a diagonal run behind and a really clever ball from Illuminato to release him. It's a nice one touch finish from Musa to equalize. Well, you know, you're the Queens Royals, you're on the road, defending national champs, you built a one nothing lead and you enjoyed it for what, about seven, nine seconds, something like that. Not even, for four seconds. <laughs> and, that, and those are the moments that, uh, that I've always believed you're, you're most vulnerable psychologically, and that's the, the five minutes to start and end each half, five minutes after a goal, whether your team scores or the opposition, you just really have to remain switched on and concentrate, and if not, good teams will punish you. Jean with the right foot that time. Now oh, Jean found himself free, and I think he almost had too much time there's not a player near him. He just pulls that a little bit. Tigers closing in on a dozen shot attempts here in the opening half. That was their 11th. Run up by the freshman Mateus Wormans. Queens substituting. Cole Pumpian, sophomore. Had to look forward to this trip from just outside of Atlanta initially, so a closer drive for family and friends to come see him. Sandy. Kevin, yeah, you've seen this Clemson team quite a bit this season. Of those who return, has anyone kind of jumped out at you? Maybe a, a Titus Sandy or some others who look like because their role has increased, they've been able to embrace it. I would think the amount of time that these guys are playing who've stepped into starting roles uh, would speak to that. Well, in the, in the modern era of the transfer portal, I, I always think it's refreshing to see young players stick with the process. And for me, I just think Arthur Duquesne has just gotten so much better than last year and really some of the other players in this team. And, you know, I think we'll see him tonight, but James Kelly, very good player at that forward role. Tyler Trimnall continues to impress. A little bit strong on the header by Trimnall, junior out of Lancaster, South Carolina. Well, Pete, if my count's correct, I think that's the the third cross that Trimble's able to get ahead on. You just have to feel like he's going to put one of those on frame. Trimble, one of the shots leaders on the Clemson squad. 15 coming into the match again. Mormons will kick it away. Sandy and Musa. Could see Feldman was looking for a call there, but he just muscled off the ball by Titus Sandy Jr. Here's Duquesne. Illuminato. Vital in the middle. Yoshizawa hung up with Eidinch. Well, again, just trying to penetrate centrally. At Queens has done such a good job of clogging up those central areas. Feldman, a very well coached team. You can just tell by watching over the first 30 minutes of this match. Talented guys and being put in the right place. The shot attempt, no, the follow, yes. Ciro Borlo Jagi, his third goal of the season. Off the initial shot by Brando. I think the referee is going to look at it here and also check and see if he was in an offside position when he was able to pounce on that rebound. That's a good initial shot, and Joseph Van Diemen just goes down to parry it, but he doesn't parry it out of danger.
Brando had a very good effort with the left foot. And then the opportune moment for Jagie. The goal will stand. So after getting the lead a little more than 26 minutes in, now here we are. Have look here. He's able to, to find some free space and get off the initial shot. Just not quick enough closing him down. And Dima does well to get on that. It's in the middle of traffic, and Queens is just quick to respond on the rebound. Tigers were able to bounce back with their first goal four seconds after Queens' initial effort, but that stretch will be extended. So the third goal for Jagi. Native of Argentina transferred to them from West Virginia. He's come in and made a big impact. Now Illuminato and the Tigers. The Queens team 3-6-2 overall. 1-1-2 one, one in the eighth sun. They're currently in fourth place. They were picked eighth, which would be last place in that conference. Just their third year in the eighth sun and in Division I overall. They wouldn't be eligible for the NCAA tourney until the 26-27 season. John had an idea to get it inside, denied by Zachariah. Feldman. And now it's Feldman and Sandy. Jagi feeding it back. Brando. Oh, and taking a shot to the eye. Hitting the deck is Jagi, and he's still down. Might have been contact actually to his forehead, but he immediately grabbed his right eye. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of bodies in there at the top of the area. Yeah, he, he must have had head-to-head -head contact inadvertently. Zero Borlo Jagi able to pop back up. I just believe it was Musa, yeah, who made contact with him. And it appears to be okay. Getting the check over and make sure there's no chance of a concussion. And, of course, having stopped play, he will head back over to the sideline, but we'll see him back out there soon enough. I, I would suppose, I mean, it appears that he was given the clearance right there. Yeah, I think he's okay, but because the... Athletic trainer had to come on the field. He's going to have to just step off momentarily. Queens will play down a player until he's allowed to return. I didn't. Tigers spending most of this opening half on the attack, just the one goal to show for it, despite 12 shots and five shots on goal. This time on the defense. Yeah, I think they'll I think Coach Noonan and this team will be frustrated with the with the score line because they've done well and created chances. And the Queens has been opportunistic in the opportunities they've had. Queens had scored 10 goals over their first 11 matches. And they've got two here scored within the first roughly 31 minutes of this match as we're now deeper into our opening half. Coming up on 11 minutes to go before the intermission. Arthur Duquesne, as you said, Kevin, a player who's really elevated his role and his presence for Mike Noonan's squad. Magnuson and now Sandy. He just does a good job of pulling in a wide area and just stretching the team vertically. Boy, John, everything with him is just quick movement. What an impressive looking young player he is. Duquesne, looked like he may have slipped. Oh, and Duquesne hitting the ground hard. Meinhard crossing. Could not get it to where 
Trimnall would have been able to deliver. Yeah, he was looking for Tyler Trimnall there. Staying with it, John. He hits the deck. And there's your whistle. Second yellow card against the Queen squad. This time on the freshman, Rodrigo Canovas. And he's just a little bit of late. That's, that stuff with John. He's just so quick, but he's able to, to get a touch and put it beyond you. Ransford John, originally from Ghana. Just like the player who scored Clemson's first goal in the foreground right there, Habu Musa. Well, this is a, a dangerous moment for Queens, about 22 yards out. Matthias Rormans, their freshman goalkeeper from Brazil, growing up in a hurry. Impressive work. It's three shutouts this year, and two of those matches ended in a tie to give you a, an idea of just the kind of impact he's come in and made. So here comes the opportunity. Jean, and he ties it. What a strike from Jean. Wow. Second career goal for Ransford John. Well, that was the ideal distance to be able to get it over the wall, but dip it under that crossbar. And that's a goal of the highest quality from the freshman. Positioned it beautifully. So the foul occurring. Canovas getting the yellow card for the aggressive play right there. And then the powerful left foot of Renford John. Rormans, his fellow true freshman, had no chance. Yeah, he was full extension there and still not able to reach that. So tied once more in this opening half. Illuminato. Well, Pete, did you have 2-2, two, two, 35 minutes in? Especially over the first 25 minutes when <laughs> Tigers were attacking, but Queens was denying well. Duquesne on the feed from Jean. Jean took it away. We saw him attempt a right-footed kick, but he prefers using the left foot. And that time wide of Trimnell once more. And again, Trimnell's in the right area. He's the target. Looks like he just maybe mistimed his jump there, Pete. St. Benedict prepped in New Jersey, where he finished up his high school soccer, Ransford John. St. Benedict, I believe, very good reputation in the Northeast for cranking out guys who go on to big things. Well, some, some outstanding players have come out of there. Claudio Arena comes to mind. Greg Berhalter comes to mind. Pretty nice Thank soccer pedigree there. And New Jersey loaded with some great athletic programs and their parochial schools. Illuminato. Transfer from Drexel, speaking of guys who came from the Northeast to this Clemson program. Duquesne. Meinhard. Wow. I don't think I didn't want to make it that interesting. And Musa going for the bicycle kick there. It was difficult. It was such a flighted ball. Well, Habu Musa was mighty close. He was trying for the bicycle kick. And it looked like I didn't was, was thinking he could <laughs> get at the high point with his head. And did not defend probably as he would have liked. And you've gotten a good picture a couple of times when if given time in those transitional moments if, if Queens has an opportunity to reset defensively it's looking like a 4-5-1 and they're just very compact centrally that's why Clemson's having some joy in some wide areas pass across leaping is Rormans 
That's what 6-3 will do for you. Boy, he really skied. Yeah, and that's a good thing he was able to hold that because Alex Meinhardt was just lurking at the back post, but a nice little clip ball from Okanlola here. You can see Meinhard was, had timed his jump well. Warman said well to hold that. Odd angle as well. Good job hanging on to it. Sandy just giving time for Meinhard to come over for the header. Keggy back on the field. Feldman. Keggy. So now Queens will have an opportunity. Well, a flurry of goals scored once we got past the 25-minute mark into this match. First off, Michelle Feldman on the attack on a beautiful feed from his teammate Brando. Four seconds later, Wahabu well, Musa, his second career goal. The answer by Queens. That was by Jakey, a third for him on the year and the Tigers moments ago. A second career goal for their freshman sensation, Ransford John. Very few times tonight as Queens been on the attack. Four shots, all shots on goal, but successful on two of them. That's good collective defending there. Musa coming back to do work. Trimnall trying to get it ahead. And Dema came into the match having allowed 13 goals in the previous 11 matches for him. As he has been the guy once again between the posts. Meinhard with Duquesne. And defended well. And coming away with it, Canovas. That's well done from Magnuson. Good initial defense by Cade Bender. Sophomore from Charlotte who checked in a little bit ago. That's not a bad idea there from Musa. He's just trying to knock that down into the path of Yoshizawa. He knew he would be unable to get much power on that if he were to steer it on frame. Unfortunately for Clemson, just made some contact with his arm. Here's Romans once again. Tiger team over the next couple of weeks will have non-conference games. That's one of them. Syracuse and Virginia ahead of the ACC. Canovas. Criminal followed. And he's called for the infraction. Take another look. You can see he's doing a good job of applying some pressure. I think it's just the, the last little tug there with the right arm, you see. Initially terrific pressure, though. Tigers subbing. And so on the pitch, James Kelly, the junior out of Gastonia. John, and here comes Meinhardt with under two and a half to play before the intermission. Nice crossover, Meinhardt. Centers a pass, headed away. And Meinhardt had Trimnell and Kelly lurking there at the back post. Oh, 
hitting the deck hard. Competing over there aggressively, both sides. As you Just see. A little tug of the arm from near there. You know, can Lola in the back and forth. Criminal. Look to get it back from Kelly. Now Meinhard and a goal. Alex Meinhard joins the scoring. That's his fourth of the campaign. Yeah, and you can see Queens just fails to clear their lines there, and Meinhard's able to take a touch, lift his head, and find the far corner. See, it's just a free ball here. He picks out the far corner. In all fairness to Rormans, I think he was shielded a little bit on this. He didn't see it to the last second, but quality finish there from Meinhard. Zachariah went for the steal, and Meinhard makes some pay. So Clemson with its first lead of the match. Coming with under two minutes remaining before the intermission. Tigers three goals tonight, giving them 28 on the season as they play their 12th match of the campaign. Well, Pete, the seesaw nature of, of this game so far, you, Clemson will certainly want to stay switched on here the last minute. They've done well to take the lead here, but they've got to be careful. Roberto Alvarez. Kicking it away. Alvarez from Houston. Sophomore in their program, one of the many true freshmen they counted on in year number two as a Division I program in the 2023 season. Guys like that have grown up in a hurry. I think it's one of the things Coach Carey has talked about was just he understands it's going to be an opportunity to get some experience for these young players, but it's going to pay off in the long run for his team. You say Yoshizawa as the seconds count down in our opening half of play. Oliver near, and, and Dema had to take that seriously as we arrive at halftime. You see the record for the Tigers under Mike Noonan when they have the lead at the intermission. And a Clemson squad Engaged in a battle here with their ace on foe. Well, when you look at those numbers, it gives you a sense of, of why he's on the the doorstep of number 400. Mike Noonan's team, the three to two advantage, and those are the final scores of their entire games, the past two, against North Carolina and Louisville. But here at the break, it's a three two lead as Mike Noonan's able to put Clemson in front for the first time tonight. So here we go in the second half, a first ever meeting between Queens, which shares the Queen City with D1 programs like Davidson and Charlotte, at least in that metro area, and trying to make a name for themselves tonight. And I think so far, anyone around the ACC or the Atlantic Sun, Queens' conference, would look at this score and say they are doing just that, acquitting themselves quite well over the first half of this match. Well, you mentioned it earlier. They were... Uh... I don't think it's a stretch to say they were Division II powerhouse, always in the national rankings. Very good most recently in the South Atlantic lead. They were a dominant team in what is known as the SAC, the South Atlantic Conference, now trying to establish a presence in a very solid mid-major soccer conference, the A-Sun. We told you they were picked at the bottom of that league. Lipscomb out of Nashville, Tennessee, and Florida Gulf Coast, the teams picked one and two. I just remember when we get further into the season, NCAA attorney time, one of those schools could be one that pulls an opening round upset if they're able to do what the predictors expect and one of them's able to win that conference. Maybe it'll be Queens, but the trouble is they couldn't get to the NCAA until 26 27 because of the transition from D2. Right, and one of the things that Coach Carey has talked about in making that change is the jump from most of your games being within a three to four hour radius, and now he's got some longer road trips all the way down to Jacksonville and into land, Florida, and going over to Nashville to play Lipscomb. 
That's a, a little bit of a transition as well for your team. They are at the edge of a conference. They used to have a school or two close to them for a brief time. Gardner-Webb, USC Upstate, and ETSU were all in that conference for a while last decade. ETSU and Gardner-Webb left for other destinations. USC Upstate a couple of years ago moved out of the Atlantic Sun simply because the travel was too much for them. And now Charlotte is the team at the edge. Campbell was in the league for a while. That gave you another school up this way. But they've since moved on and on their second conference since they were in the a -Sun. Pete, I can't keep track. They bounce around, don't a they? a -Sun, Big South. Brando, their top offensive threat. We did not see a whole lot of Queens working in their offensive side of the field in the opening half. Perhaps their head coach's talk at the intermission will direct them more toward that. Primnell with the body language of disbelief. So the Tigers, one of the many in the Atlantic Coast Conference, you'll find the top 25. Mike Noonan said thanks a lot when Stanford and SMU joined the league, bringing so many great sports, among them men's soccer. Pittsburgh, UNC, yeah, you see UNC still ranked higher despite the Tigers' victory against the Tar Heels. Well, when they opened ACC play here at Clemson, that Stanford game was a great game to be on. Talking about last nine years, two teams collectively have captured five national championships, so the Atlantic Coast Conference just got stronger with that addition, and SMU is a very good program as well as Cal. Cole Pumpian, after making a very nice defensive play to deny a pass to criminals, the one who went down for Queens. Contact with Illuminato. Roman's going long, and I think this is a, a smart tactic. Fresh it's not going to try to build out of the back and break that Clemson press. Understanding your team's capabilities and being pragmatic, there's something to be said for that. Criminal, Mason Jimenez on the pitch for the second half. Oak and Lola. And over is Romans. Theus Romans had five saves in the match on Saturday against Stetson. He's matched that total so far tonight. And Oak and Lola actually does well. I didn't think he was going to be able to reach that beat, but he's able to, to get something on it. You watch Queens on a regular basis. Familiar with some of their big contributors around the field. And those guys have stepped up tonight. Including Michelle Feldman, who scored his third goal, native of Germany. And off the push against him, free kick. Zachariah launching. That's nicely won from Adam Lundegaard. And Illuminato had it taken away. Quick footwork by Pumpian. And a shot. And there is Andema for Clemson. Well, those are the moments I think that Coach Noon was frustrated with. Not building out of the back, losing possession. And Brando, not a great angle, but. They do try to attack from all sorts of angles, as does Clemson. But that was a point that Oliver Carius made when we visited with him on the phone earlier today. He was a real joy to talk to. I thought it was interesting that the MLS team coming to town, he's looked at that as a huge boost for his program. And the others in the Charlotte metro area who play D1 soccer, he says, will tell you the same. They will go to a Charlotte FC match at least once a year as a team, will Queens and Tigers 
on Come the on. attack. I think that's good to have that carrot dangling in front of your players to, to see what the next level looks like. In the box, working for position. Jean, I should say, Okanlolo is trying to get it back to his teammate, Trimmel. That's clever from JG. Titus Sandy. Jimenez giving to Trimnell. Illuminato. Now Duquesne. Okanlola. Header in front. Over top. Well, you can already see uh, the trend here in the first few minutes of the second half, Pete, is surely Coach Noonan talked to his team about changing the point of attack quickly. They're moving the ball from side to side faster, just trying to open up some seams on this queen side. Criminal, five shots, three on goal on the evening, but does not have a tally to show for it just yet. Off target on that header try. Kelly, now Meinhard. Meinhard through traffic. Illuminato took the feed. Adam Lindegaard back in action for the Tigers. Pass too long for Okanlola. It's just a second time that Jimenez has looked for that diagonal ball to release Okanlola, and just a, a timing was not quite on, but not, not a bad idea nonetheless. So Mike Noonan doing some coaching over at his team's bench. He is just under 36 minutes from getting a 400th career win. Successful prior stops at New Hampshire and Brown. Of course, the Tigers went up to New Hampshire and picked up a road win on a chilly Sunday night last year on their march to a second national crown and third College Cup Finals appearance under Noonan. Criminal. Kelly scrapping. Good battle by Zachariah. Well, that was a big tournament win for, for Clemson on the road. I don't think anybody thought that was going to be an easy game to, to go in New Hampshire that time of year, playing on artificial turf field. Even through the TV, it looked cold. <laughs> Felt cold. <laughs> Well, it feels like Clemson is up the tempo of the second half there. They are quicker in transition now. Well, the size and the speed is what Oliver Carius, Queens head coach, said has been the biggest difference in the jump. I would think that would probably be a universal thought when a team moves from D2 to D1, really in any sport. Quick move. I think that's Pumpian. fair to say. Brando, now Pumpian. Wide on the shot try. Tigers stepping outside of ACC play tonight. The Pitt Panthers setting the pace. Stanford and Clemson right there. Tigers and Pitt, the most conference wins 
And overall, Clemson tied for third in the most victories among ACC teams in all of their matches. Well, and those three teams are sitting on a, a tie of 12 points apiece. And what's interesting is Pitt has a game in hand. They have three left to play, and Stanford and Clemson have two conference games left to play. So we'll, next couple of weeks will give us a clearer picture of what that ACC tournament bracket's going to look like. Kelly flying in, trying to get the header on the long pass by Duquesne. James Kelly, the junior from Gastonia, finished up high school at Highland Tech. At 6-2, able to elevate. James has had a good year. He's one of the goal scorers in that comeback win over Louisville on the weekend. Tigers scoring a flurry of goals in the latter stages of the second half of that match. Sophomore Pumpian out of Walton High in the Atlanta area, Marietta, Georgia. He'll get it from Jakey. And they work it back to the goalkeeper, Rormans. That was Caleb Woodard. That was the first time tonight Roman showed a little bit of hesitancy on the ball and he was able to eventually get that cleared and away from Trimble. What about 20 minutes into the opening half without a goal being scored? And then two within four seconds, one on either side. Goals by Jean and Meinhard. Followed for Clemson as the Tigers eventually at Meinhardt's goal, snap a 2-2 tie. Okan Lola, quick work on Pumpian. That was a good look, and that was all unlocked from Adam Lundergaard hitting that diagonal ball for Okan Lola. Quick move ahead. Meinhard tried to feed Kelly again. The follow, Jimenez. Strong shot. And yet another save on the night. That is number six for the freshman, Rormans. Yeah, Jimenez does well here to hit that with pace and keep it low and on frame. Easy to not you get your ball, body over that and put that over the bar. Queens will throw it back in. Tripped up is Brando. Idinge. Kate Bender. Down low it went. Now the Tigers looking to return. That's good cover from Adam Lundegaard, and this is a good ball for Kelly. He's going to have to handle that. Rorman's doing well. An imposing figure was coming at him in James Kelly. It looked like he was of one of two minds. He knew he couldn't handle that with his hands. I thought he was going to head it for a second there. He was able to, to just kick that clear. In a position where he would have had to head it or kick it away, and he opted for the latter. Duquesne. And I think that's the second time you've seen what Adam Lundegaard can bring to this team. He's obviously very good in a defensive role, but he has the vision and the technical ability to, to find a good long diagonal pass and unlock a team. Jimenez getting crossed up with Sandy. Now Illuminato to Kane.
Timnall with contact. Trimnall able to work toward the top of the box, but then running into the defender. And slowly getting up, Milan Miric, native of Bosnia. It looked like Trimnall was just trying to combine here. I just kind of clattered into him there, didn't he, as the ball was passed away. On his third college stop is Marich, played at Dayton and also Marshall earlier in his career. Eight fouls apiece now. Rormans with the high launch. Wow, Kelly, <laughs> quick look over to the official. James Kelly coming on late first half. He's remained out there. And an opportunity against a team that I would think you would say Clemson would be expected to defeat. Many might not have thought Queens would hang this close this long, but a lot of playing time for guys. Oh, my. And Dama took a hard hit. Boy, that sounded like it was a lot worse than it was. I believe the ball made the loudest sound, but for one split second, I thought you might have had a head-to-head -head contact once again. And wow, that was I uh, I didn't come I didn't. Forward. Yeah, yeah, just he goes for the punch. So what happened was it looked like Andama deflected it back off the head of Iden, just trying to get it away from there. Trimnal forces the pass. Oh, just missing on the slide. Here's Duquesne in front, and that's wide. Well, looks like we're going to get a Jimenez cool had the here. second opportunity. The first, though, Meinhard was ever so close to a second goal on the night. I see the ball come across. Nice delivery. Meinhard's just not able to get a touch on it. And you see the look of frustration to our in-goal camera. But here's an opportunity. Antonio Illuminato, corner kick for the Tigers. Closing in on 80 of those this season. Off the deflection. And racing with it. Antios Zacharia for the Queens Royals. Queens came and played basketball against the Clemson men this season and a first ever meeting in hoops this past season. That's nicely cut out from Magnuson. Magnuson, another of the true freshmen, but the experience of having played overseas in Iceland. So tonight feels like a warm day for him, you would suppose. Kelly, now Duquesne. Probably in the mid-50s by now. We're 59 degrees at the start of our match. In front of the net! And the goal! He'd been close all night long to adding to his total, and Tyler Trimnell with a third goal on the year. A quality service from Duquesne just sets it on a platter for him, and it really felt like Tyler Trimnell was going to go tonight. He was so close on several occasions. He was able to put that away and give Clemson a little bit of a cushion here. One of the South Carolina natives on this Clemson squad from Lancaster. The 4-2 match, first time either team is led by multiple goals. That is assuming it stands. Duquesne with a beautiful pass. Yeah, he's well on side, and he's able to get over it and just knock it down into that far corner. Four goals by four different Tigers tonight. Trimnall joining the parade along with Meinhard, Musa, and Jean. Well, this is a pretty measured service from Duquesne here. He knows exactly what he wants to do. Nice little clipped ball. Trimnall's just able to, to beat Caleb Woodard to it. Trimnall had been knocking on the door tonight. 
six shots now, and that was his second on goal. Felipe Marty now into the match for the Queens team. Well, if you're Queens for two thirds of this match, you were right there with the number eight team in the country. Well, and they were, as we said, they were opportunistic with the, the moments they were able to get in the final third. And I think Clemson has just been able to ratchet up the pressure and make it that much more difficult this second half. Oh. Musa going around the defender. Feeding ahead, Okanlola. His pass deflected away. Beautiful save, Rormans. And the system referee is going to say that Musa was in an offside position on the initial through ball. Criminal almost had a second goal within about a minute of the other. What a beautiful job. Another save on the night. And that is a seventh for the freshman. But offsides takes it all away. That's very close, Pete. I'm not sure that Okamola was off, but this would have been a seven save. A perfect position. Heck of a he was playing live, so was Terminal, so wipe that away. Marty, Felipe Marty just in. Plea by Wahabu Musa and the Tigers will get possession. Trimnal able to keep it in. Crossing pass. Meinhard sets up. Nice shot by Iden denying the shot by Duquesne. That good work from Trim will get to the end line, delivers a good ball. Samuel Idinch, number two, he was a second team all A Sun performer a year ago as a junior. Look at Meinhardt just setting up Duquesne there and able to earn a corner kick. Here is Mason Jimenez. It's a good bunch from Romans. Brando, Pompian taken away. Good work by Meinhard. Here's Jimenez. And Duquesne. Contact. Oh, my. And it'll go back over to Queens, much to the displeasure of the home crowd. Yeah, the fans are not happy about that one. So it looked like it was a foul there. That's not quite shoulder to shoulder. That's shoulder to shoulder blade. Yeah, some hard contact by Feldman. Yeah, but it looked like he was almost backing away and, and then stumbling, of course. Yeah, I think the assistant referee as well as the center referee missed that one there. Zachariah, Queens, as we approach 20 minutes remaining in the match. Down by a couple of goals. And again, a team that not necessarily a scoring machine. There are two goals tonight, giving him 12 on the season in a dozen matches. Jakey knocked away. Good defensively, Lundegaard. Well, Clemson's done a good job of keeping Jakey under wraps in the second half. I think it's the first time you've mentioned his name, Pete. And this is why he can be dangerous. Tiger team captain, Adam Lundegaard, came from the state of Maryland, played at Huntingtown High School. That's 
Lucas Magnuson, who remains down for Clemson. So the clock stops with 20 minutes and five seconds remaining. And Magnuson will get attention from the athletic trainer. Appears to be something to do with his right leg. It looks like he's walking okay based on the first few steps. That's a good sign. to see if he's going to stay on here, Pete. I'll show you what happened. It was earlier in the play. Yeah, just stretched a little bit and Temperatures dropped. It's mid to low 50s now. I think we are going to see a change here. Looks like they're prepping Mason Lamb to come on. And Magazine will head up the ramp to the locker room. So here's Mason Lamb. Check in in the back for the Tigers. Anderson. Some good play this evening, especially in the opening half when Queens, the few times they were on the attack, it was Magnuson who denied an early shot on goal, assisting Joseph Van Dema. Tigers will inbound. Lamb, a grad transfer from Cal State Fullerton, originally from the state of Florida, so he got closer to home. Well done from Queens breaking pressure there. Zachariah ahead for Feldman, but Sandy able to disrupt things. And Lola back to defend with Pumpian right there. You know, this is a point in the match where I wouldn't be surprised if Mike Noonan watches this part of the game video as much as any other to see what his guys are doing defensively with a two point lead, a, a two goal lead, uh, the ability to be able to close this out. But well, I don't this think is it's some coaching it. video in this stretch right here against a, a mid-major opponent and all that. Yeah, I don't I think did. it's in their DNA to, to sit in and preserve a lead. I think they will be hunting for that fifth goal. Yes, that's the, the, the mentality that Coach Noon's teams typically have. Here comes Duquesne. Really do notice his expanded role this season, Kevin, as you were noting and the improvement he's shown. Meinhard, the centering pass. Back to defend was Pumpian. Couple of head fakes by Cade Bender. And another Tiger going down and a lot of pain is Antonio Illuminato, yeah, the Drexel transfer. There. He says he's okay, so being taken at his word by the official just may have been the sting of the ball as much as anything else. Or the sting of a contact, body on body contact. I couldn't tell if knees collided or if it was just a, a slight stomp on the toe. 
And they have stopped the clock now at this point. Once again, Raz, the athletic trainer, will perhaps. He's getting a little workout tonight. Tell him to come off. As you see Illuminato hobble off. It was Queens which struck first on a pretty feed to Michelle Feldman. He scored their third goal, his third goal of the season, their first of the night. Tigers four seconds later got the Musa goal. And as the first half continued on, the tally by Jakey. Tigers then were able to tie and take the lead on goals by Jean and Meinhard, led three to two at the half, and then the terminal goal. I think the center official's taking a look at this, the, the video review to see if perhaps he missed something that should be a bookable offense. I don't I don't know if I see a, a caution or a red card in here. It all looked like inadvertent contact. Yeah, a, I, I don't know if there's anything you could penalize the Queens player Bender. Yeah, the bottom for. of the cleat is is exposed, but I don't think there's a lot in it. And Illuminato, he's he's indicating what he thinks happened to him, and the official is telling what he saw on video. And now he's not going to allow Illuminato to come back on immediately. He's going to let the restart happen. Native of Italy. Had the winning goal last week against North Carolina. Thrilling finish for the Tiger team. We will see a free kick up coming. Jean ahead. Brando and knocked away by Jean. And as we see, as quickly as he can get back out there, Illuminato. So. Tigers now back up to the desired number on the pitch. Duquesne. Oh, that's nicely done. He toward Musa. Try to get it back to Duquesne. Ransford John. And Duquesne denied. Iden. She has been active in the back. Pumpian. Brando. Tiger defender right there, Duquesne. Oh, Pete, that's uh, one player for this young Queen side that's impressed me is Cole Pumpy in tonight. He's been active. He's good on the ball, willing to get forward. Amir Ibrahim. And the Royals remain on the attack. Feldman. And then Dama will come over. Bad idea that Feldman was just looking for Ibrahim to, to run beyond, to have someone to flick it on to. Meinhard, unable to catch up to it as Pumpy and knocked it away. Tigers closing in on an eighth win of the season against two losses and two ties. And what would be win number 400 for their head coach, Mike Noonan. I did get a kick out of the fact that when he was asked before the season about having gotten another national championship trophy in this decade for the Clemson team, he pointed the trophy and said, that's actually getting kind of dusty. We need a, a new clean one <laughs> as the season got underway. Well, that's college soccer, isn't it? Here. 
the games come fast and furious, and I guess for Coach Noonan, the trophies do as well. Yep. Well, and, and again, he knows what he has been able to build here. He knows the support he's gotten here from the administration with the facilities they put in place with what they continue to add for the Olympic sports here at Clemson. And he has got himself the opportunity to have a program that can bring home more than just the four overall national titles and the two that he's won at the helm in his 15th season. 175 of his wins coming with the Tigers. And the tumble taken by Feldman. And substitution. Galen Flynn. I believe it's the first time tonight we have seen Flynn come on for Clemson, the grad transfer from St. Louis, originally from West Hartford, Connecticut. And Kevin, uh, West Hartford, Connecticut has a special place in Clemson athletic lore as we see the substitution rules. At this stage of the game, they will stop the clock. I think it's a smart move. But anyway, yeah. West uh, Hartford, the hometown of a guy named Tim Bray, who Clemson fans know dear and well, the longtime former sports information director and continues with his great work as a color analyst on the radio network and still as uh, all things Clemson facts and figures. Yeah, Tim could probably pull up right away and tell you which game was Noonan's 300th win or Absolutely. right off the top of his head. That guy is an encyclopedia of Tiger athletics. Yes, he is. Tim, of course, is more Clemson than anything else, having gotten down here in the late 70s, so for most of his life. And I think, I think Tim's only in his late 40s. Uh, but anyway, I kid. <laughs> uh, but he has uh, yeah, been on the scene here since the late 70s. I find it hard to find those with an association with one major university for that long active right now anywhere in the country, regardless of role. Adam Lundegaard. Uh, Titus Sandy getting it back to him. Tigers now really looking at that clock as their main opponent trying to work it down, not let the Royals go on the attack. Oh, that's a good ball in. Never the opportunity, though, to get anything going there for Duquesne. And Idinge with a, a good last minute tackle there, able to steer that ball to his goalkeeper. Idinge has played very well this evening. Queens fell at Virginia Tech 4 0, and at South Carolina 3 0 among the major opponents they played over the past few weeks. If they're not able to rally here, this will still show that they can be competitive and, and be a challenge to a major nationally ranked program. They'll, they'll quickly turn their focus to their next match, which is a away game with Jacksonville on Saturday. The Atlantic Sun, four of its schools are in Florida. Now, granted, you've got two of them right there in the Jacksonville area and another west of Daytona Beach, but the fourth way down there, Florida Gulf Coast, down in the Fort Myers area. So that's a hike for anyone in the league. And it stretches over to Nashville with Lipscomb. Oh, that's well done from Adam Lundegaard there. He's nearly able to find Trimnell. Sandy, a good job to disrupt the flow. Lundegaard also back there. Zachariah for Clemson got it across midfield. Good to see Mirage back on the pitch. He took a hard fall earlier for the Queens team. Again, Cole Pumpkin's able away. to play himself out of pressure. 
That's something I've noticed about this Queens team as a defensive squad. They do a good job playing away from pressure and at least making the other team have to work to reset. Well, so that, uh, first rule of thumb for a, a player on the ball. His first touch should be away from pressure. Buy yourself a little bit of time to keep possession. Sandy. Lundegaard ahead. Oh, uh, pretty obvious infraction. And suffice it to say that Milan Mirage really doesn't have much of a case to make. That's the, the two hands in the back there. Tyler Trimble the referee. Going down. And Trimble now popping up. Under 10 minutes to go in the match. And we await the kick. Header in front. Duquesne crossing pass. Headed out of the box. Good job escaping by Zachariah. I think that's and he's be hurting. A book in there, and it's. It's not so much the severity of the foul there, but it's the potential counterattacking moment for Queens, and the momentum was stopped. Oh, Zachariah getting fouled there. Tigers will again sub. And again, a new rule. The clock will stop at this stage of the game. Of course, the new substitution rules in college soccer. There will be no re-entry from that substitution in the second half, so Trimble and Meinhard, their evening is done. Alvarez. Nathan Torres into the match. Battling with the Tigers, Galen Flynn. Offsides is the call. So we noted all that is in place to be successful here for the different Clemson athletic programs. Of course, the Tigers a few years ago unveiled the beautiful soccer facility. Now, just a, a short ways from there, the Watts Family Athletic Center, the artist renderings of that. It's currently under construction right next to and up against the Jervy Athletic Center. If you've been on campus, you can't help but notice it. And it will have all of the things you need uh, for the Olympic sports. You notice the recovery area, the weight room, area to do some indoor practice. Athletic training facilities will be top notch and further advancing. And of course, you note over the years, well, softball, they started a program, built a beautiful stadium. Soccer got the nice complex to go along with this. Tennis has had an improvement and so on down the line. Golf, rowing, the new sports, gymnastics and women's lacrosse. But this will provide the added wellness component and athletic training components that the new facilities for all their bells and whistles don't include. Now they're there for the Olympic sport athletes. Absolutely. And, and all of this development drives recruiting, Pete, doesn't it? Some of the finest facilities in the country. Had the opportunity to call a volleyball match a couple of Sundays ago, Kevin, in the over uh, the overhauled Jervy Gym. Beautiful job there of 
really keeping the the intimate feel that's been such an important part of the home court advantage for Tigers volleyball, but at the same time, uh, spiffying up a place that needed uh, such. And they literally raised the roof, didn't they, Pete? They did. Which I think was it was time for that to happen. Leonidas Zacharias, uh, Leontio Zacharias, has been all over the the ball tonight, and we see him active off his chest, trying to keep it away from. Tigers on either side of them. Rormans, four goals allowed tonight, but he has been very effective between the posts. Well, he's had a, a couple of outstanding saves on the evening. If not, the margin could be bigger here. So Queens will return to Atlantic Sun Conference play Saturday against the Dolphins of Jacksonville, and they'll see another ACC team. And battles upcoming with the likes of North Florida, VMI, and Southern Conference. And back at it with Florida Gulf Coast. Florida Gulf Coast picked to win the Atlantic Sun. I think that schedule speaks volumes about where they're located geographically. You don't have to travel very far to get really, really good out of conference games with the likes of Duke and Clemson and Virginia Tech on your schedule. And as you mentioned earlier, Davidson, UNC Charlotte right down the road. Yep. Tigers again setting up for the corner kick as we're coming up on five minutes remaining. This first ever matchup between the Tigers and a very young Division I program in Queens. I thought in talking to the coach today, it was such a great uh, time visiting with Oliver Carius. I asked him, I think, I think it's an obvious question, even though he's a school based in the Southeast in a prominent city, but and they recruit internationally as well as anyone at their level, but I, I asked him how often he meets parents or, or a prospect and says, hey, I'm with Queens University, and someone asked him what it's like back in New York City, but he said, actually, <laughs> no. Uh, we've gotten enough of a name for ourselves. And they're trying to make a name so that there is no confusion whatsoever. Oliver Carey is a great player. Guy who was part of a very successful Division II program as a player, then as an assistant. Under a head coach who did great things there, the founder of their program. And he has taken the reins and now a decade and a half into his head coaching career, looking to make them a factor in the Atlantic Sun and beyond. Well, he may not hit that 100 win mark tonight, but he'll get another opportunity on the weekend. Under four minutes to go. Cesar Mendoza just into the match. Battling with the Tigers, Mason Lamb. So Mike Noonan closing in on career num win number 400 and a 176 victory in his 15th season guiding the Clemson Tigers. This team will continue its impressive record when leading at the half under his watch. That's a good tackle from a Idinj. Boy, Idinj, nice takeaway on the tackle. The time very well on Yosuzawa. Nice and clean, wins the ball, springs up quickly. Yosuzawa, the latest really talented player to come from Montverde Academy in Florida, this Clemson program, where the Tigers have a very close connection to the coaching staff. Boy, still battling John. Who's uh, defending? Four goals on the night by four different players for the Clemson team. Oliver Near for Queens team. Tigers get ready for a visit 
next Tuesday from another team up I-85. This one a little bit closer, the Spartans of USC Upstate. Syracuse and Wofford follow then on November 1st off to Blacksburg for the battle against Virginia Tech. Well, we talked about where they're sitting in the ACC standings tied for first right now, and that game with Syracuse is never an easy one, although they might be below them in the table. And that's a Syracuse team that just a couple of years ago won a national championship. And the game with Virginia Tech's always very competitive. A Virginia Tech team that scored four goals in its win against the squad from Queens. Ibrahim. That's going to stay in, I think. Uh, Queens and Ibrahim player. pleading his case. Amir Ibrahim, we saw him in the opening half. At a place where a gentleman, I am Ibrahim, <laughs> made a mark those many decades ago with Clemson soccer. Let's see, the Queens team thought that was going out for a corner. They let that run over the, the end line, but I think the center officials must have seen the slightest of touches. <clears throat> Joseph Andema, the junior from Ghana. Musa. <laughs> Pinball like action. That's really well done from, from Clemson. That'll be one of the moments they pick out and say, this is what we need to do in transitional moments. I would think there'll be some very good things to coach off of for Oliver Carius for Queens off of this match. Considering how they've competed against the level they're facing tonight. Lino Paz. Final 10 seconds of the match on this Tuesday night in Clemson. The countdown to another Clemson victory and a milestone for that man. Mike Noonan, career win number 400. His illustrious run that's covered nearly four decades as a head.